Hey, what's up, everybody? This is DJ Keel, and today I want to talk about beat source. Uh, if anybody's been watching this channel for a long time, you know my stance on DJ streaming services. I am not a fan. Uh, I have my usual beefs with these things, primarily that you do not own the, the music and it can be taken from you at any given time. You have no control over that. And you're kind of limited with what they can give you. So it, I have issues. I do understand, even though I'm a Luddite, that this is the future going forward. So I do respect that. And I will go kicking and screaming into the future, but I will go there. So anyways, uh, I've been testing out the service for better half of a week now. Um, I'm using it primarily on Serato. Uh, I tweaked a little bit on Rekordbox. Rekordbox and Serato have different set of features. Uh, Serato is in beta right now, so a lot of this stuff isn't fully baked. So, you know, you got to take what I say with a grain of salt, for at least for right now, until the, the final version comes out for the new version of Serato. But at least for right now, you can get an idea what the service is going to be like and what the whole process is. All right, so I made notes. So if you see me look down, it's because I'm looking at notes right now. All right, first things first, let's go with the pros and then I'll get in the cons and I'll cut back and forth with video to show you what I was dealing with. All right, first things first, excellent selection of music, really good selection of music. And the guys over at DJ City and Beatport and all these other people that work together to do a really good product here. If you go to the website and you download your music from there, it has a a good selection of playlists already queued up with good songs and the selections. And it's a really good starting point for you. If you're trying to get into new music or if you're trying to maintain your library and you're missing some stuff or, you know, you're worried about, you got to do a wedding or whatever, and you got to think about stuff that you may be missing. This is excellent on the website. It is phenomenal. The stuff that's available to you to help you, uh, think about music and especially music that you, you know, is not on your radar stuff you may have forgot about or things that's not in your playlist in general. So it's, it's a great concept for a website. So I'm all on, I love this. I'm, I'm giving the finger purse right here. Excellent job. All right. Number two, there's a lot of clean versions of songs. And as a mobile DJ, that is the primary pet peeve of any of these services like Spotify uh, you don't really have much, that much control over what song you get. And a lot of times you don't even know it's a clean or a dirty version. This one clearly labels ex uh, explicit lyrics and it also labels clean versions of songs. And I love that. This is awesome. Very good feature. All right. Third up on the list, songs download very, very quickly and easily. The whole thing about this type of service with streaming services, it has to work. It has to work as advertised and it's got to be efficient and easy to do. And you can uh, download songs from your, from the website. You can go on the website, add it to your library, or you can just download the song inside of Serato or Rekordbox or Virtual DJ. All these places, it's in your library and it's super easy to get. Number four, setup is really easy. Zero hassles. I did, I wanted to test it out to see what it was like. so. I did the 30 day trial. It was painless. I went to Serato, went to the options section in there. Fairly easy to set it up and get going. And it, it, it worked as advertised. I can't stress that enough. It worked as advertised. Before the cons, I want to say this is a really good service that I will probably use going forward. Um, highly on the probable. There's things that bother me about this, and I'll, I'll get to that later on. And I want to I want to be clear here that this is a service that worked good enough that I could see me using it in the field. It does have problems, and a lot of the problems I have are nitpicks, are major drawbacks from a streaming service like this. It, it's just something that Beat Beat Source can't get around. It's a fact of life, and it's one of the drawbacks of a streaming service. Clear. I, I was just this again. I am going to keep my subscription going forward, and I would definitely use this in the field. And I would use this at a wedding. 
uh, I wouldn't get all the songs from here, but in a pinch, yes, absolutely, I would use a set of wedding. Okay, let's get to the cons. And they're not that many. There's only a few things, and I think a lot of this stuff was personally to me the cons and I don't want this to be a negative ch- like ah oh, DJ Keo is going to be mad about something today like I don't want this to be a negative channel uh these are things that I hope uh beat source can see um at least what other DJs think about this in the field and hopefully they can improve some of these things and and to be fair I understand that some of these things are a drawback of just the streaming service in general so I'm not going to hold that against them but is some things, little tweaks here and there, and I think this will be a better process. First con, um, while the library is excellent, it has a lot of record labels that already signed on board. This is great. This is good stuff. There's one of the things I said about stems for native instruments is that I said it wouldn't catch on unless stems was uh, embraced by all the major record labels, and it never was. You know, you had some deep house people that used it and some, you know, some dance labels, whatever. But you needed top 40, you needed rap music, you need R&B, you needed reggaeton. You needed all these major platforms to go forward, use this thing, and they never did. And that's why stems never took off. It's amazing. Th- and I, we're going to talk about stems later. All right, so this is not an end-all, be-all. So if you're thinking that, well... I'm paying for this service. I can just get all my songs on here. You are wrong. (laughs) There are holes in the library. And that is, that's just the case for any streaming service. They're going to have deals with certain artists that they can't use. Um, There's certain songs from Beyonce that's not going to make it here because she has deals with Tidal. And same thing with Jay-Z and just artists like that. Uh, People have deals with Spotify where their music is only going to be on Spotify. So it won't be here. So, you know, this cannot be the end-all, be-all, but it is a very good, it's a good platform to stand on. I would suggest that if you're going to use the service, do not stop (laughs) acquiring music from other sources. (laughs) Make that your mission, and in a pinch, go get this, go log on to the service, BeatSource, and in a pinch, get it from there. But primarily user DJ library in conjunction with <laughs> BeatSource. So Beatport and BeatSource are two different platforms. Um, I'm not really sure how that works. Um, there's different labels that are not in BeatSource that are on the other one. Um, I'm, I don't know why that would be. It, they should be combined. So if you could combine that, that would be great. Major thing that's missing from this platform is specialty remixes. Um, Basic songs, they're on there and it's fine, especially new releases. Uh, A lot of them are on there and there's radio ads for them. Specialty remixes like a a longer eight bar intro or, you know, especially remix with some other artists on the hook or whatever like that. Don't expect all of those things to be on here. Um, for the most part, if it's a major thing and it's on Billboard or it's on a major chart, chances are it'll probably be on here. But the miscellaneous things in the weeds, good luck with that. You're still going to need to go acquire them from your original sources. You can only download 50 songs into your locker and store them offline. This is annoying. And I don't see the difference between you streaming them and you storing them offline because you're only going to play a certain amount of songs in the first place. You're not going to play all 50 songs. I would prefer not having to depend on the internet. I've DJed in venues and clubs and on boat cruises, particularly boat cruises where the internet is spotty at best. And I see people with their phones all like this trying to get a signal. DJing on a boat cruise and trying to use the internet is a nightmare. And I've DJed in venues where, you know, it's in a basement somewhere or like it's, it's got heavy interference from other things and getting on the internet is just a nightmare, just an absolute nightmare. So if you're dependent on 
you using, you know, streaming off your phone or some kind of internet service that's moving. Good luck with that. So 50 is not enough. At a minimum, and I'm saying a minimum, it should be 300 to 400. Now, if you want to charge, you know, extra to get like a thousand songs on your, in your thing, cool. But 50, 50 is not enough. That is useless. And currently, I have to specify, because Serato is a beta, there is no uh, storing it offline in a locker for Serato. Um, that, that's something that is coming, but at least for right now, there is no way to store it uh, offline. So <laughs> it, that should be addressed as soon as possible. Okay. And this is a personal pet peeve of mine from uh, streaming services for DJs. Songs can be pulled at any time with no notice. And you could have had a set ready with a particular song. And good luck with that. It could just disappear and you don't even know it. Streaming services need to alert you, at least, if you're going to go forward with this and this is going to be the norm, they need to alert you that this song is going to be removed in 10 days or five days, at least something you need a heads up when songs are being removed from the platform. Why is it extra bonus of the cherry on top? But at a minimum, you need to know when songs are going to be removed and have at least some kind of time frame so you can adjust because yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's obvious, but it's not in any platform right now that I can see. Nobody tells you when stuff was removed from Spotify or Tidal or BeatSource. So I think that should be something going forward that you should know about. Whether it's an email or when you turn on your software and the very first time you start it up, it tells you these list of songs are leaving. Would you like to buy them from BeatSource or Beatport? Whatever. You, you get my drift. At least give me the option to buy them if they're going to be removed so that I can maintain my library and keep things moving as is. Search. Um, search sucked. It sucked a lot. Um, I'll, I'll put it like this. Search works, and you can find your song, but you also get 300 other songs that you're not looking for, and I don't want that. If I'm looking for a particular song, I only want that one song to show up when I type the full name out. And right now... If you search for Beyonce and Crazy in Love, every song in the library that says crazy or love in the title is going to come up on your search list. And that is terrible. <laughs> that is absolutely, especially if you're in the middle of a mix and you're crunched for time and you're trying to weed through a hundred songs to get to the song you're looking for. If I type Beyonce, Crazy in Love, Beyonce Crazy in Love should be the only song that shows up in my search list at a minimum. And the other thing that, that it needs to be tweaked a little is that you have to spell it out exactly. Beyonce has this stupid little thing on the end of her name, the E, the accent. I don't, I don't know what that's called. Whatever that stupid thing is at the end. If you don't type that in there, you're going to have trouble finding it in your laptop. Now, on your desktop, on your, on your web browser, when you type Beyonce Crazy in Love, it'll show up perfectly. It's easy to find. However, <laughs> on your laptop in Serato right now as it stands, if you don't type Beyonce with that little accent stupid thing on the, on the letter of her E and Crazy in Love exactly, you will have a hard time finding this song. Now, maybe it'll be at the top and maybe it won't, but the possibilities are 100 other songs are going to show up at the same time. And so I feel like the search needs to be a little more pinpoint accurate and a little more forgiving with the spelling. Like if you get 90% of the way of Beyonce, like you should fill in the blanks of, oh, I mean, you're crazy in love. And I get this isn't Google, but, you know, Serato current search works like that. Tractor works like that. Uh, Recordbox works like that. So uh, if the main software can do it, I think the, search feature on this should get there too. Another pet peeve of mine, and this is a personal beef, um, during search, I think that it should be, if I'm clicking on beat source and I'm doing a search, 
I don't want the songs in my... Well, I get why they did it, and I would like the option to turn it off or on. Personally, if I'm looking for a song, I know it's not in my library, so I would like it off. Um, but uh, when you're doing the search, it searches your library as well as the Beat Source library. And I would prefer if you could just turn it one or the other. So if I'm looking for something that's in the Beat Source library in the cloud, I would like just the Beat Source songs to show up in my search results. Um, and again, this is just a personal pet peeve of mine. There needs to be a way to refresh your search. Uh, actually, no. So there needs to be a way to refresh um, when you've added something on, say, your browser or, you know, on your phone or whatever, and it goes to the cloud. There should be a way to force a download at that moment instead of wait for it to come in gradually. Um, my, it ranged from like two minutes, three minutes to like five minutes. And it was random. If I put it in my phone, because it's easy to search for things on your phone or on a, a laptop, it should go to your thing. And, and I understand the bandwidth and the searching to keep searching over and over, which is why there should be like a button to just do an instant refresh and make the songs download instantly rather than wait for it to come through on its own. Um, you should have those two options. And my last pet peeve, and I'm, I understand why it's not a feature, but it should be a feature, but I know why it's not a feature. Uh, when you try and record anything that's streamed, uh, so if, you're, if you want to make a mix on your laptop and you have some stream songs and some songs that from your library, recording will not work. <laughs> and if it is working, it'll stop because of you're not allowed to record stream song. And I get, I get why, piracy. Like, I get it. I totally get it. It makes sense to me. But I feel like the people who are doing DJ mixes, they're not selling songs on YouTube. And DJs respect this thing. Uh, so make it easier to make their mixes and stream their things online and that kind of thing with the stream files. And probably the reason why is they couldn't get certain record labels to get their libraries up if you had an option to download it. But like my reasoning with that is that if I really want to get the song, I can. <laughs> it is easy to get the songs off of here. Uh, so, I mean, like if you're trying to stop piracy from making it so that people can't record the songs, you can't. So why make it harder for the people who are doing the right thing? If I download the song here to make a mix or whatever, I'm not planning to sell it on whatever or make money from it. I'm just making a mix to practice or whatever. I don't even put my mixes online as it stands right now, but I can't record this. So uh, I, I got to use an external ex a recorder to make it work. And this is like, there's, there shouldn't be any reason for that. The only reason why I'm doing it is to placate some record labels for a thing that's really easy to do anyway <laughs> outside of your mixer. So it, it's silly. And, and this is why, I, and I said in my last video, record labels are idiots. The people who run them, they're stupid. A service like this for DJs, every record label should be throwing their music at it like they do for Spotify. Every record label. You're already paying for it. You can get your 0 .002 cents from the plays. And, and this is the vital point, you can gather a lot of information from the DJs using services like this. Way more than you can get from Spotify. <laughs> Way more. So, I'm just saying, record companies are stupid, and this is the reason why they're failing. All right, so these are my pros and cons from the service. I liked it enough to I'm going to continue paying for it. It's a good service and it delivers what is asked of it. If I'm on the fly and there's someone's begging for a new song, I can easily get it like this. Great. It does everything I want for it. It's got all the songs on Billboard. Great. Um, obscure, random songs. You're still going to have to go search for those on your own. Um, 
I am recommending this to service to people. I am not sponsored by them. <laughs> However, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is purely my personal opinion about this. Pulse Locker, I had a lot of issues because Pulse Locker was missing major labels and it had huge chunks in the library. Beat Source has filled in these gaps a lot better because they have really good people that understand the DJ community and DJ pools working together on this and they're doing a pretty good job. So now it is not perfect. There's flaws. There's a lot of flaws and they need to keep refining and working on this thing. Uh, the website needs to be a little bit more responsive and maybe they need more servers. I don't know what it is. Um, better hardware, whatever they're doing on their back end. It needs to be a little bit more responsive and, and work a little bit quicker. Um, downloads be, need to be a little bit faster. And, you know, your search, the search has to be solved. <laughs> right now, as it stands, I wouldn't say it's unusable. It's just extremely frustrating searching for a song if you're in a hurry, uh, in between a mix. Searching for a song on B-Source like this is is a little bit frustrating it's not horrible just frustrating it could be better sometimes it works good sometimes it doesn't work good um but songs load up quickly if you've downloaded and added it to your library it it's cached inside your computer even if you can't download it on serato but it's semi-cached so the next time you load this song it does load faster so i mean it these things help the process to make it smooth. It loads as fast as the things that are in your actual library. So kudos to them for that. Um, all right. So this is a recommend. <laughs> Marginally, but it, it made the cut. I liked it enough. And I, if you guys are using it right now, I would like to know your thoughts about it. And are you, if you're not, if you're on the fence about it, are you planning to use a service like this in conjunction with your actual library right now? Let me know what you guys think. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, peace out.